Louis Paulette Lafontaine is one of the most influential figures in Canadian history. Not only was Lafontaine the defender of the French language, but also fought for the rights and interests of French Canadians. Among his contributions, Lafontaine worked alongside Robert Baldwin and founded Responsible Government. Lafontaine's mansion was built in the 1830s by renowned architect John Austell. Designed in a neoclassical style, the mansion is the last remaining residence built by Austell. The mansion he resided in during his political life is located on Overdale Street and recognized as a heritage site. In recent years, it has fallen into a shameful state. Lafontaine lived there for most of his political life. It was his house when he was Prime Minister of Canada with uh, Baldwin. They had a joint Prime Ministership when Lower and Upper Canada were put together in the 1850s. And then he retired from active politics, became a, a judge on the Supreme Court, if not the chief judge. And then afterwards he had a, a, an active uh, legal practice. So that house, you know, is the most important house uh, really for Canadian history of its sort. La Fontaine, just like in his era hundreds of years ago, uh, was in the focus of a lot of complex politics. I think his house is too. And so what you get is you get a municipality who was at the forefront in the 1980s of designating that house as a historic monument. And that was absolutely crucial. The municipality really was important. And Heritage Montreal worked very closely with the city and they designated it. That was a huge step. But yet each level said it's absolutely crucial to go forward. And I think that the politics around that were difficult right now Federal um, policies and provincial policies regarding heritage housing um, and heritage sites means that the owner has to agree. And if the owner doesn't agree, the only option available is expropriation. But also everyone's waiting for all the other groups to make the first step. So I think that's what's happened is we've got a stalemate situation. Of the 350 buildings that I've had something to do with over 40 years, I don't think that any other building more merits being a house museum. It, it's not a problem to redo authentically. Uh, it's as if it's been damaged in a war. The house never had a big set of grounds, but it did have enough of a garden and uh, uh, attached to it that, that, that could be reconstituted as part of a, uh, of a large development on the site. What would be ideal would be to convert the house into a center for teaching about responsible government. Um, there, are small, there are designations in Nova Scotia, there's some in Ontario, but we don't really have a center here. And the interesting thing is during that period, the parliament was here in Montreal. And we're looking for the base of that parliament in just outside uh, Pointe à Calia. Um, but yet there's a whole building sitting here from that era and it's being ignored. And a lot of it is, is that tourism should focus in Old Montreal, not in the area around downtown. But that house is still there and it could be used as a centre for talking about the burling of the parliament, the rebellion um, issues uh, and also the rise of responsible government, which is politically very complex. And Francophones, Anglophones, all the various people of, of Montreal have different interpretations of it, but that could be a place where that could happen. It's a witness to the most important um, bill, uh, law that was passed in Canada, except for Confederation. When the Rebellion Losses Bill passed the Parliament in Montreal, it even-handedly paid for the damages both of the rebels and the, um, the people who stood for the crown. And then there was a riot. And during that riot, the um, parliament buildings were burned down, and the mob fired guns at the house. 
and tried to burn it down. Teachers use that building, um, even if it's not officially designated as a museum. They use it as a place to take classes. And sometimes I have heard teachers talking and pointing to the various pockmarked spots around the left-hand side, uh, saying that these are the bullet holes of the mob that came to uh, attack the house. Uh, La Fontaine wasn't there at the time, but they ransacked his library and gutted the interior. The thing is, it's very hard to prove that. We don't find bullets in there. Um, but that's the stories. And the thing is that that's, that's what the house does, is that when you have a building like that, it can get people to tell stories about those events in a way that simply reading it out of a chapter in a textbook couldn't. And so you can get young people to imagine those pockmarks, even if they weren't even there. But the fact that the building is there, then you can do that. It's a piece of Canadian history, right? We should try and keep that uh, safe. And... C'est évident, le gouvernement fait pas assez parce que si on regarde l'état de la maison, on voit que ils font rien pour en prendre soin. Comme ils laissent ça comme tomber à terre, ils s'en foutent. Fait que moi, je trouve que c'est sûr qu'on nous avait dit que c'était un personne, un, une personne francophone. C'est ça que c'est vraiment important parce que quand tu penses que comme la province du Québec, les autres sont vraiment forts là-dessus. Avec... Puis lui, était vraiment important, pas juste pour le Québec, mais pour le Canada aussi. Tu, sais, tu penserais qu'il pousserait plus ça, mais ils font rien. Puis... D'accord, c'est triste. <rire> Ne serait-ce que l'héritage euh, matériel que pu laisser au Québec soit euh, la construction d'un tunnel serait à vrai dire suffisant à moi pour que dans euh, l'historiographie il y ait laissé une marque suffisante pour qu'on puisse euh, considérer euh, au moins restaurer euh, l'endroit où il a vécu. Tout comme c'est le cas de la plupart des euh, personnalités euh, politiques et importantes du domaine euh, canadien et français. I think it'd be great if it turned into a museum or something like that. I think it's an important part of uh, Canada's heritage. I mean, uh, he was, he also, especially being Quebec, he also, like, you know, champion the French language. So I think it'd be an interesting cultural site to go to. So I, I would definitely go. Particularly, chez les Canadiens français, on a tendance à oublier que l'un des, des, des événements les plus importants qu'on associe à l'histoire de la nation canadienne française, soit la rébellion de 37-38, n'était pas à la base un conflit ethnique, mais plutôt un conflit politique qui visait, euh, euh, qui, qui, à vrai dire, qui, qui, donc, qui, qui demandait à la métropole l'acquisition d'un gouvernement responsable, entre autres. Donc, comme c'est euh, l'un des héritages les plus importants de, des pensées des rébellions, qui sont un événement historiographique majeur dans la fondation d'une nation canadienne-française, donc je pense que ce serait très pertinent qu'il y ait un musée à ce sujet-là.